your prescriptions. Download the free app today. Breaking news on Good Morning Football. Kim Jones joining us right now from East Rutherford live with her initial reaction to Pat Shermer being fired as the head coach of the New York Giants. Well, good morning, Kay. My first reaction is we have the perfect weather in East Rutherford for Black Monday. It's dreary, it is cold, it is raining, and it does mark the end of Pat Shermer's tenure as New York Giants head coach. Interestingly, 9-23 and 23 as Cleveland Browns head coach, and he ends his Giants stay 9-23 and 23 as head coach of the Giants. Kay, on Friday, I was in the Giants locker room for the first time in what I believe was a month. I haven't been here very often. I've been covering teams that are headed to the playoffs, frankly. And in the locker room Friday, I found players who were exhausted. I believe mentally exhausted. They were indifferent. And I left that locker room believing there has to be a lot of change here. I already did believe Pat Shermer would be fired. And as Ian Rappaport, our buddy, reported this morning, that has indeed already happened here at the Giants facility. This happens just two years into a five-year contract. Like you said, nine wins over the last two seasons. What about the GM? What about David Gettleman and his future with the team? I think that's going to be a fascinating decision. I am told and have been told now for uh, more than several days that Dave Gettleman is 50-50 on whether he will return, meaning whether the Giants want Dave Gettleman to return. I will note John Mara and Steve Tisch have a 50-50 split in ownership. It would be too easy probably to simply say it comes down on those lines, but I do believe there is conversation within the building behind me about Dave Gettleman's future. Dave Gettleman in recent days and weeks has courted several reporters to do his bidding. They have done so. Candidly, I'm not among them and I am 100% comfortable with that, but I do believe the Gettleman factor will loom large when it comes to hiring a new coach. If the Giants truly are interested in Matt Rule, we already saw a year ago that Rule, the Baylor coach, is willing to say not now to the NFL and return to Baylor if he doesn't get what he wants. Very interesting dynamic here to see how it plays out if the Giants keep the GM and expect a coach to work with that GM, or are the Giants willing to clean house and start anew after so many losing seasons. Kim Jones keeping it all the way real on a Monday. That's why we love you. Thank yeah. you so much for taking the time and joining us here on GMFB. You are the best and we will be joining you very shortly with more as I see those cars pulling up the players after a loss yesterday they are coming to clean out their lockers. Yes. That's the point, Kay. I apologize for interrupting. Players are arriving. Some I'm sure know their head coach has been fired. And some are going to find out very shortly. Kay, I apologize mm. for the interruption. No, never. Absolutely not. Uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Maybe you'll talk to guys like Golden Tate, Saquon Barkley, coming there to the facility one last time for the 2019 season. Back here at the breakfast table. I mean, Kim could not have laid it out better. Uh, you know, better to move on with Shermer and Gettleman. Better to move on with Shermer and keep Gettleman. What's the, what's the better option? I look at the Redskins. They fire Bruce Allen and say, you're out of the building. We haven't won. And you might actually detract from getting us the best head coach possible because of the relationship you have with the owner. And then I look at this situation and, and you think, okay, well, if Gettleman doesn't bring us the most attractive head coach, then do we have to then find a coach that works with Gettleman? And how do we work with that dance? Mm -hmm. We've mentioned this. The Mara family does not like turnover every other year. They like having stability. Unfortunately, the Giants are not the Steelers anymore. The Giants are not that team where you can have just three head coaches. That's not what it is when you're in the NFL and you win nine games over the past two seasons. I'll say this on Matt Rule. Matt Rule went in and interviewed with the Jets last year. Matt Rule blew the Jets away. They were like, who is this Baylor coach? And what it blew him away. The Jets said, okay, since you don't have any coordinators, would you be interested in maybe hiring Greg Williams or Todd Monken, who we've met with as head coach candidates? And Rule said, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to do this on my terms. I'm going to bring in my guys. I want my coordinators. I'm going to pass on the NFL this time around. Matt Rule has connections to the Giants. If Matt Rule comes in there and he is thinking, okay, I'm into it, but the GM, I don't know about him. I'm not... Mm -hmm then that makes it really difficult to hire Matt Rule when he's already showed that he's walked away from the Jets and the Indianapolis Colts interviewed him last year and said, I'm not necessarily able to do this job either. So the Matt Rule factor is fascinating as we head towards this because guess what? The Carolina Panthers mm. are also very interested mm. in Matt Rule and they might be able to mm. willing to offer him whatever mm. he wants. Quickly, are you surprised that we've not heard anything official out of Dallas and really just at all? 
I think we'll hear some news on Dallas and Jason Garrett. I also think his contract is done in the middle of January. So mm -hmm. if we don't hear for a couple of days, it might be something with contractual issues trying to get out of that thing. Got it. But I think that the Cowboys and Jason Garrett, that, that road has been driven. That's it. I know this. Kim Jones is not here to do anybody's bidding. I There's love, been some reporters collected for that. Jones. And she is very comfortable not being among them. Kim, have a day. <laughs> Niners Seahawks was last night. It was a fantastic game, as it has been both times these scenes have gotten together. So Marshawn is back, but it was mostly a man named Homer. However, this was the odyssey that Seahawks fans wanted. Marshawn played. He got in the ball at the goal line. Finally, not to Ricardo Lockett. Over the top, Marshawn scores. San Francisco winning for the game. Yeah, baby. Look at the Seahawks fans. They came prepared. They wanted to taste the rainbow. They had an actual man who had to go out there and pick up Skittles like he was an E.T. of the Pacific Northwest. That was recent. 1914. <laughs> Touchdown, Reem Mostert, who's having a great tear. Look at the Niners. Just watch use check if you watch the Niners, please. It is so entertaining. He had a huge 49-yard play. Amazing. And look at this, DK Metcalf, the rook. Remember Pete Carroll took his shirt off when he came in? They drafted him for the first time. It ended up being a great pick. He's a playmaker. Now 26-21, though. Fourth and 10, under a minute to go. Russ, what do you got? Who are you throwing to? You know who it is. Mr. Reliable, John Ursua from Hawaii. Mahalo, get down and spike the ball. Spike it, spike it. 23 seconds, 20. Russ gets it down. So here comes Marshawn to fulfill his destiny and run one in from Pete Carroll. But wait, Seahawks had to delay a game penalty inexplicably. There was a George Fant issue. He was banged up. Pete Carroll says it was our fault. They have to move him back. Marshawn runs off. Instead, let's go to Hollister. No, that's incomplete. He says, where's the pa flag for pass interference? I don't know, Nate. Does that look like pass interference to you? Yes, it does. All right, well, they did not stop the game. They said they looked at it, did not have enough to call pass interference. You go back to Hollister. He takes a big hit, but he scored, right? Did he score? Russ says he scored. Guys, he didn't score. He's about, I don't know, two inches short, but I think they got the call right. He can't believe it. Can the Seahawks ever not play in a bat bleep insane game? They do every week. How about this? First time since 1997, the San Francisco 49ers are the one seed in the NFC. 26-21. Maybe we get this one again. Who knows? Here are Jimmy Garoppolo, though, and Kyle Shanahan. I'm clinching that beautiful, divine home field in the National Football Conference. It's pretty incredible, especially just, uh, you know, from the start of the season, all the, all the hearsay and everything of our team and what we were going to do, and then to come out here and get the one seed. It's, uh, it's a pretty nice feeling. But, you know, it's, uh, it's a step in the right direction. we still got a long way to go. I mean, we, we work for this all year. I mean, it's always the goal going in just to get in the tournament and um, to get in there with the number one seed feels very good. Um, we were going to be ready to deal with whatever we had to tomorrow, um, whether we had to go play three games. But um, I, I know we are much happier that uh, we can stay at home now and that you're two games away from the big one. And if she's a gauntlet, uh, no team's made the Super Bowl without a first-round buy since 2013. The Niners get the week off. This is your Wild Card Weekend schedule. Bills at Texans on Saturday. The other AFC game, Titans at Patriots, follows on CBS. Vikings at Saints on Sunday on Fox and Seahawks at Eagles. Wrapping it up on NBC. So the path to the Super Bowl in the NFC goes through the team we just saw highlights from, San Francisco. How tough will it be? To knock them off at home. Yeah, Shregs mentioned it. I think we'll say this about any team that has a bye. They get the rest. They get to relax. They're on their home turf. The same routine that they have at home. They're around their family. They eat the same foods that they're used to. The surroundings look the same. But most importantly, as I'm listening to Kyle Shanahan talk, I'm like, man, he gets more time to create a game plan. Mm -hmm. like, this is the same dude that has looked at as one of the young, beautiful minds in this game. And I think he proved that this year. You know, with everybody healthy, he went out there and proved to be one of the best coaches in the business. So for two weeks, he gets to sit on ice and create the best game plan possible. I think that's why this is advantage, because a coach like that is going to come up with something special. It, it's a great take. And it's also, this is not an experienced playoff team. Aside from maybe Joe Staley and Richard Sherman, yeah. I don't think there are many veterans who have been through the grind. So the advantage of not having to go on the road in the second round and to not have to play wild card weekend gives you a chance to sit back and watch the competition and they come into your den. I don't know what that home field is going to be like in the playoffs. It's not the Superdome. I mean, it's the 49ers Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. <laughs> right. It's not Candlestick. Right. I have no idea if it's this huge home field advantage. Oh, I've seen teams win They've there. been hungry, though. But that fan base wants this, and the faithful will show up. I'm fascinated to see who they get in that round because the divisional round, it's probably going to be the 4-5 matchup, which means, okay, you look at it this way, and it's suddenly, huh, all mm -hmm. right, it's the Eagles or the Seahawks. It could be a Seahawks 49ers rematch oh. in the divisional oh, round. Man. And I'm here for round three. It's funny because you have Lambeau and Arrowhead. Like, 
At Levi's Stadium, you can order a glass of wine on your phone to your seat. They will bring it to you. It's a different true? deal. Yeah, for sure. I've done it. You can get a Merlot right to your seat. <laughs> can't hide money. No, you can't. And they have a lot of it. And they also apparently have answers to just every question. I, I, we, even as a show, as a country, have tried so hard to poke holes in this Niners team because Garoppolo hasn't been there and Shannon hasn't done it. I keep saying that to get through these NFC playoffs, you're going to have to beat the one-namers. you got to beat Aaron. you got to beat Drew. They just beat Russ. Like, did you guys watching that game last night? Did you think Russ was going to punch it in? Yes. yes. I definitely did. Yes. I'm actually shocked he I didn't. Zero doubt. Seahawks fans still think he did. <laughs> but they didn't. They beat him. They beat the one namer. Every question has been answered with exclamation point. Have them or low. I feel like by this time last year when we're breaking on the playoff picture, you guys are talking about experience a lot more than right now. Has experience yeah. lost its luster in this playoff picture on both sides? Yeah. We'll see. Patriots. I mean, the Niners have definitely none. Have that. we got to wait until the playoffs never start. never played in a playoff game. Experience kicks in. This weekend. I'm, okay. We gotta wait. If you and believe see. in experience, the Saints are going to the Think Super about Bowl. the one seeds, the Ravens and the 49ers. Yeah. Neither one of those quarterbacks have much experience going through and these. And I don't things. know anybody's beating them. I don't know. I don't Eagles know. Giants. What do you got? How about this? Eagles have some.